A new report about the state of the world's oceans is due out today. Already last year, that same study found that, well, the health of our waters uh, that are so vital to us are of concern to say the least. With record-breaking waves that cause flooding, increased coastal erosion and change the course of ocean streams. Streams that carry billions of kilograms of water and heat per second across the globe. They're key to our climate and they could actually be about to collapse. A scenario scientists warn would totally disrupt our weather pattern. We could, some say, be skating on the Seine within the next 20 to 30 years. Apart from that, of course, we all already know about that continent of plastic uh, that is uh, bobbing around us. Well, to give us more insight on the state of the world's oceans, we're joined now by Italian environmental entrepreneur and activist, Mr Gianni Valentini. Thank you so much for joining us. Can I start by asking you, in your opinion, I mean, it sounds very dramatic when you read these reports. How bad is it actually? Well, it's um, very bad in the sense that it's, uh, we have to have an urgent action on it because uh, it's a uh, it's point of escalation. Um, the beautiful thing about nature is that when it is addressed in the correct way, it actually resolves itself. So that's the importance of the resilience of nature. But if uh, we do not take action rapidly, then obviously the degradation uh, reaches a, a level that it will take much longer if it ever comes back. So yes, it is very important to know the situation, but take action immediately. So what's the most worrying element? I mean, it's lovely to hear that it's not too late and that we can react and turn things around, but what's the most worrying thing in our oceans at the minute? Well, the most worrying thing, it's uh, pollution, I would say. Uh, that's a generalized word because uh, pollution, we can be from pa plastic pollution, um, uh, petroleum-based uh, pollution, um, the fertilizers, uh, but also it can be noise pollution. That's also very important. And uh, most of the time it's overseen, but it's very important because it actually um, destroys the balance and the delicate um, intricacy of uh, sounds within the ocean, especially for the, for the large marine uh, animals and, uh, and all kind of sort of communication and uh, um, meet, mating and everything else, all kind of uh, action. So it's very, very important. But the pollution in general, so man-made interaction, man-made alteration to the environment has reached a level that we really have to do something about it. I've even read that there are dead zones already in the ocean where life ha has ultimately stopped. Yes, technically there are dead zones. Obviously dead zones is just a temporary thing because uh, there is the change, there is the evolution, uh, the adaptability of uh, marine areas that... What's a dead zone now will be the thriving zone of, uh, in, in a few decades. But the problem is, if we have many of these dead zones around, um, the problem is the biodiversity that we're having will, have, will face a decline, and therefore um, inducing a, like a chain reaction in all kind of, uh, in the biosphere of the marine uh, area. So this has consequences, not only on the ocean, on land as well. And, uh, and on humans. And of course humans, uh, one of the big things, the most visual things I guess we can see in the ocean is that continent of plastic that uh, has been recorded. That's something you have looked at and looked at a way that we can actually use that plastic pollution to our own benefit. Yes, correct. There are actually five continents like this in, uh, floating in the, <laughs> in the sea. And uh, it is absolutely possible to use this uh, plastic waste. It's also organic waste and convert it into something, some kind of resource, we have uh, modelized and actually developed a system that can actually convert this into energy. And, um, and it works absolutely fine. And this could be deployed for the garbage floating in the ocean, for uh, the areas around uh, coastal areas that are polluted. I'm thinking about Philippines, but not only. Um, and uh, obviously uh, for the waste in port cities and in normal municipal cities as well. So it's something that um, the problem is waste, we can turn waste into resource and into a pollution-free resource. That's the important part. Okay, so there may be a solution there. Of course, the ultimate solution is less consumption. But is there a support for putting those kind of solutions into play? I mean, are governments stepping forward and helping to finance or get them up and running? Well, no, 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 I can't say that there are, no. Okay. There, are, there are different solutions, but uh, there's always little tweaks and little uh, twists that you have to follow. And it looks like most of the time you have to fit right into the 
The key yeah. has to fit into the hole. And uh, with a solution that compromise, which covers many possibilities and is adaptable, you don't usually have the perfect fit. So not having a perfect fit, it means it's difficult to be supported by government or public. Well, yeah, because they're all expensive, expensive projects and ultimately it all comes down to money. Uh, but Jenny Valentini, I have retained that there is still time to turn things around if we, if we start to act. Thanks so Absolutely. much for your time and joining us no here problem. on France 24. Much appreciated.